Oh, hi, Brave. I was just... Danya? L listen, I wanted to apologize about how our last conversation ended. I needed some time to process the stuff about you and Odith. I'm sorry if I made you feel like it's not okay. It's just not something I'm familiar with, so my initial reaction was not optimal. Thank you, Danya. Would you like to come in? Oh, uh, nah, it's okay. You're probably busy. I'll come back later when... I have an idea why you came up to my door. Sorry, I couldn't help it now that I've met Odith, and after the things you said. So when I heard him hiss, I thought... It's all right. You're welcome to come in and watch. Huh? Are you sure? I am. If you're curious, I'd rather you come in and see for yourself instead of sneaking behind the door. I couldn't invade your privacy like that. Besides, would you even be at ease with me around while you guys get busy? I'd be lying if I said I wouldn't be stepping outside my comfort zone. But I care about you, Danya. So if this means I'll be able to satisfy your curiosity and help you get comfortable around my symbiont, it's worth it. Will you come in? Okay. So the hissing sound, what was that? You could say it's a way for Otith to communicate hunger. So you'll be feeding him now? I'll be providing vital sustenance, yes. You may sit here. All right. It would be best if you watch without engaging for the time being. If you need to leave at any point, you're welcome to do so. The door is unlocked. It would be very much appreciated if you could wait until we're finished with the renewal ritual, though. Sure, I can do that. the immunity treatment? <sighs> yes, that's correct. My body needs to absorb some of it through the skin. I see. Are you otherwise okay? Yeah. <sighs> that was really something. I think Otis won't be hungry for some time. <laughs>
Sorry, I got stuff all over me. It's okay, I don't mind. How do you feel about what you saw? Fine. I mean, you were amazingly hot. Looks like your symbiont knows exactly what you like. That's really cool. Took a while to get there, though. Showing me all of this took some serious guts, Brave. I'm not sure if I would be able to take the risk and open up like this. It wasn't easy for me. I'm going into the shower now, Danya. Sounds good. Come over to the hydroponics garden when you're ready? Sure. May I come in? Of course. I made you some tea. By the way, I've been meaning to ask, is everyone on Odaria this kinky? Not really. Actually, not at all is more accurate. How so? Odarian society is generally quite conservative. Odaria has been very isolated and still is somewhat apart from most cultures. People's values lean on the conventional. Since they don't get out much, a large segment of the population is weary of things perceived as different. Relationships and intercourse with other species are highly frowned upon, for example. The main concern is for medical reasons, but even with today's highly advanced medicine, there's still a notion that foreign species are inherently unhygienic. That's unfortunate. It takes time to open up and let go of old ways, and we have a long way to go. I have a hard time imagining it. Back home, some Terrans would trust some subspecies more than others. How much money you made every month mattered more than species or nationality. Or at least where I lived. Can you tell me more about the Odarian society? Sure. What would you like to hear about? Odarian society stands by monogamous relationships. Polyamory exists, but it's something most people regard with suspicion. I have personally experienced a polyamorous relationship back on Odaria. While it definitely has its challenges, it can be rewarding. Was it with members of your own species? One of them was Odarian, and the other is Zakarian. 
Oh, I know Isikarians. You do? Dated one a couple of years ago. I see. In my culture, individuals usually follow a plan prepared for them by their clan. Do people not have the right to pick what they want to do with their lives? They do. It's just that some clans are less traditional than others and let members pick their own path. Mine is on the conventional side, though. They vowed to write me out of the inheritance if I don't come home to follow the family legacy, which, of course, I don't have any intention of doing. What do they want you to do? <sighs> Study in hospitality and take up a position to manage one of the clan's successful hotel chains. Well, so your clan is really well off. Definitely. And you can't imagine how much pressure that is to be part of such a family. Well, I haven't experienced it myself, but I have a general idea. So you're not much into hotel management? Not at all. I'm someone who always liked experimenting, even before Otith. Something my family wasn't too happy about. I take it they don't approve of Odith. Well, I haven't shared the details of my close relationship with him. They don't approve of my lifestyle in general, and my chosen vocation, despite my recognition in the medical and symbiotic studies communities. Sorry to hear that, Brave. Kinda sucks when you don't have the support of your family and things that matter to you. It's all right. I'm used to it. They might not understand this now, but I'm sure they'll at least see all the benefits and practical applications of what I'm pioneering when my research reaches the mainstream. What about you? Does your family support you? I wouldn't call it support, but they don't oppose me, at least. I mean, they helped me get into space flight school and all that, but I bet they wished I was making more money. Hmm, <laughs> I can understand that. Do you know other Odarians who are living outside of their home planet, like you? I know a few. And keep in touch with them, yes. As you probably guessed, most of them don't stay away from Odaria very long, even when they can afford the medication. Having to take massive amounts of it or get a shot every few hours is quite bothersome. I've seen a couple of Darians before, but I never had the chance to talk to them. You must be glad you don't have to take meds anymore. I am. Most of those who choose to live away from my planet long term tend to be much more open-minded and adventurous than your average Odarian. To give you an example, the most common question I get from mainlanders who learned how long I've been outside is, how many STDs have you caught so far? And your answer is? I'll tell you if you spend a night with me. <laughs> you know, that's actually a pattern I've seen a lot. For many, when they leave their world and see it from the outside as a big ball, every domestic problem or prejudice suddenly feels much less significant. I can definitely relate. Did Juniper say this too? 
Junie told me that every Tulrorthian she's met outside their moon didn't care that she was into women, even though homosexuality is illegal where she grew up. That sounds rough. Is there anything else you want to ask me right now? No, I'm good. All right. Well, in case you want to understand Odarians better, just keep in mind I'm not a good representation of one. <laughs> gotcha. If you don't mind, Brave, can you tell me more about Eldith? Like, how do you actually take care of him? I protect him and provide sustenance. Like sexual energy, right? Yes. Does he eat normal food at all, or does he just feed off your life force? He does consume organic matter as well, and that can sustain him for a long time. However, it might reduce the strength of his own immune system long term. Something about getting it on really makes him tick, huh? <laughs> That's right. Would you say you have feelings for him? I never thought about Otis that way. I mean, I care about him deeply, but not in a romantic kind of way, if that's what you're asking. I wanted a better understanding of how you guys relate to each other. You mentioned being in a poly relationship, so I wondered if that's something you might want to see happen in the end. It makes some things easier, based on the way you explain things, I suppose. I really appreciate that you're asking these questions. Danya, how did you feel about being around Otith back there? I mean, what is there to tell? It was obviously hot, watching you two. I didn't experience fear like the first time for some reason. I don't even know why. He released his fear gas some time before you came in, and I ventilated the room. Does that make sense? Go on. Your symbiont took me by surprise the first time, if you know what I mean. Visually, he could come off as intimidating to just about anyone. He looks like he can swallow a whole Terran with that pot of his, not to mention crush one with those tendrils in two seconds flat. He won't do that. He's smart enough to know that without anyone to take care of him, He'll die. Despite his appearance, he's very vulnerable. In that case, I'm sure with enough time and your help, I could get quite comfortable around him. Like, how comfortable? I don't know. If anything, I could sleep in the room where he stays. Do you... Think you would be okay to let him touch you again? Yeah, sure. Oh, you mean like touch touch? Doing things to me like he did to you? Would you want him to? Uh, you don't have to answer that. How about I come and hang with you guys again first? Bring some tea over there or whatever. Chill. That would be great. I'll be looking forward to that, Danya.
How's it looking? I've successfully got us through the asteroid field. It should be smooth sailing from here on out to the next stop. The Asteroid Terminal. The last station before we reach Adaria. We'll be there in less than three days. Do you think Brave will want to check it out? Or stay put? I'm sure he'll want to get off at the terminal. He actually asked me about it and wants to send a message to his parents in regards to our arrival. They're apparently the ones who paid for this trip, so he feels obligated to inform them. Oh? How so? Story is, he's from a rich family but chose to support himself by becoming a symbiont expert. Now that he's in trouble, he couldn't afford to travel discreetly without his family paying. I see. Makes sense wanting to keep them in the loop. Are you looking forward to getting an update from Riemphia? Uh, funny you should ask. I was just thinking about sending her a message when we get to the next stop. See where she's headed. What are the chances she could meet us on Odaria? Well, last I checked, she wasn't even in this sector. That's a shame. Would it be nice to see you guys catch up? Oh, that's sweet, Danya. Don't worry about it. I want to see you happy too, my friend. I can't be the only one living the dream here. <laughs> it's going that well with Brave? Hell yeah! Literally, I couldn't have asked for more. Wow, look at you, mister. And the symbiont? I'm getting to know Odith, slowly. The other day, I just hung out in the same room and Brave taught me some commands. That's it? Meaning? Don't tell me Brave hasn't asked you to partake in his symbiont-related activities. Um, not directly. I sincerely hope you said no. Well, I didn't. I'm kind of considering it. Could be fun. At the very least, I am curious. Are you nuts? This is a Dorado we're talking about. What do I need to do to help you understand that they are dangerous? Odith looks dangerous. Brave has full control over him, and Odith listens to his every request. He's super attuned to anything he says. I saw them engaging together, and it was fine. Brave let you watch them fuck? Wow, he really wants you. He wants the thing between us to work as much as I do. All right, but be careful. I can't stress that enough. Gotcha. Anyway, I'm going to the gym now. You want to join? I kind of agreed to meet Brave there in an hour, so I'll have to pass this time. Rain check? Fine. Just don't forget who was on this ship keeping you company before he got here. <laughs> I would never.
Oh, Danya. You're so good at this. Oh, wow. Glad you liked it. Can I borrow one of your towels? Sure. Feel free to take a fresh one in one of the bed drawers. Thanks. Otis, hey, what are you up to? Greetings, O oh mighty alien. <laughs> Good to see you, too. I hope you had a good day, chilling in your sarcophagus, that is. Wow, you are such funny little guys. I'm glad you don't seem scary today, at least.
We'll be friends in no time, won't we? There we go. Sorry, buddy. We'll have to wait till your master comes back before trying anything like this. Goodbye for now. Go back to your shell. Should I have tapped no or something? All right, I'm going to my room now. Tanya, you're still here. If I knew, I wouldn't have taken so long. Sorry. No worries. I should have said something. How's Odith doing, anyway? Fine. N nothing new to report. Although it has been over a week since he last opened his pod to me. Over a week? Is that long? Under current circumstances, not at all, especially considering how plentiful his last meal was. It was that time when you joined us in that chair, remember? Oh, yes, I do. I'll probably never forget it. But yes, I suppose it's not unusual. What about your health, though? Don't you need the immunity support? I've checked my readings just today, actually. I should be good and won't run the risk of illness for at least another full week. So how long can you go without engaging with your symbiont, realistically? On the safe side, I wouldn't stretch it past two weeks. Three if I'm desperate. On week four, my organs will start failing. 
Another thing to keep in mind is that a renewal ritual doesn't always have to be long and sexually fulfilling. A short practical session can be sufficient to keep one in adequate health when circumstances aren't favorable. Is that how you made do on Kayama when you were on the run? Sadly, yes. Why do you ask? You said your symbiont didn't open for over a week, but he just pulled out of his pod when I tapped hello a minute ago. I wanted to tell you. Thank you, Danya. You have no idea how important it is that you told me. We need to talk about Otith. Of course. Want to join me in my quarters? I want to get dressed first. Absolutely. I know it's late, but I'd rather not wait till tomorrow. This is kind of urgent. Sure, whatever you need. Don't worry, we'll figure this out. I'll come by in a few minutes. So, what did you want to tell me? It's about what Juniper said, about my symbiont. She's correct, that Dorada can be dangerous. Which is why, Danya, I wanted to tell you to never interact with Otith without me being present in the room. It's not because I don't want you to have a bond with him, but because he's innately unpredictable. Oh, sure. That's not a problem. I thought it wouldn't be an issue with you being in the shower nearby, so... Yeah. It's all right. It's my fault for not telling you this sooner. Going forward, please consider this of utmost importance. My relationship dynamic with the Dorada is very delicate and how you engage with him may affect our interactions and our renewal rituals. I'm sorry, Brave. I'll make sure I only interact when you're around. Thank you. No matter how much Otith means to me, I'll never be able to trust him with some things. He operates on instinct more than anything else. But I don't get it. Are you worried that he'll assault me? No, of course not. It's complicated. There's a lot we still don't know about the Dorada. There's a theory that this species may possess some level of telepathic abilities. According to ancient texts I read, it could potentially manipulate someone by power of suggestion sending images directly into a person's mind. Just a theory? It's only a theory, because it's never happened to me or anyone I've met. I don't even know if it's true. Where did you get this information in the first place? A hidden sacred temple on Kayama. It was where I did my studies and training prior to being given permission to own a Dorada. Oh, so they don't give them out to just anyone. That's correct, at least from the place where I got mine. How did you even decide to get yourself a Dorada, if you don't mind me asking? 
I've heard of the healing properties of the species years ago, and with my people's notorious low immunity, it was an obvious thing for me to try. Acquiring one from their home planet is extremely difficult. Their homeworld, Indegawa, is located thousands of light years away and outside of protected space. Getting there is rather complicated. Then what awaits you between a suitable Dorada specimen is a toxic atmosphere, torrential rains, and many predators. Jeez, sounds like a lot of trouble. Good thing you were able to find one elsewhere. Well, finding that temple was a challenge on its own, convincing the monks to give me a chance to learn about Dorada and to prove myself worthy of owning one was even harder. It took a year of living in the temple to get them to start sharing the knowledge. Can you imagine how much that cost me in terms of immunity medication? Must have been a small fortune. Believe me, it was. After they became familiar with my research and accepted me into their community, I was finally able to study its symbiotic benefits. It was shocking when I discovered that they bred them right underneath the temple, in an extensive network of mountain caves. Apparently, several were brought back from Indegawa a few centuries ago. Once I was able to obtain Otith, it took me two years to train and teach him to listen to me. He submits to my will only because he sees me as his master, and I employ certain guidelines to uphold that status. I require him to follow rules and behave in an acceptable manner. If given liberties, my symbiont may stop complying, and the delicate balance we've built together will be disturbed. Truth is, I need him more than he needs me, Danya. That's why we have to be very careful how we interact with the Dorada. If he decides he could get what he needs elsewhere, he might not listen to me anymore. Without the immunity boost provided by the renewal rituals, I will die. I think I understand what you're saying. Even when we're together in the room, he needs to see you as his leader? Something like that. Does him opening up while I was in the room show that he sees me as a potential source of sustenance besides you? Maybe. I don't know exactly. But it's clear that he likes you. Which is actually a great thing. But it holds risks. Please, promise me you'll always make sure we're together when we interact with Ota. Of course, I promise. Thank you. Sorry the day is ending with this kind of note. We had such a great time together earlier. Hmm. It doesn't have to end just yet. Would you like to stay here for a bit? Sure, I'd like that. <laughs> 